The tedium of the process was at many times grating and unbearable. But the landscape and the people, the people first and then the landscape, was the most jaw-dropping salvation every time you remember to open your eyes and breathe deeply the freshest air on God's green earth. New Zealand is unreal. The satisfaction derived from viewing the priceless and brilliant result of all of our efforts was something approaching the sensation of immortality. All said, what was it like to make the Lord of the Rings? It was, you know, pretty good. <laughs> the people that we met. I sat and visited with Sir Edmund Hillary, the first or second, depending on what you guess may be the story between him and Tenzing Norgay, a uh, man to scale the daunting heights of Everest. Peter Jackson actually sent a runner to the bookstore to purchase a copy of Hillary's book, A View from the Top, and gave it to me. That giant of a man, the adventurer, the humanitarian, Edmund signed my book and a $5 bill. New Zealand $5 bill has his picture on it. I've got to sign one. Um, so I asked him, you know, how was it? How was what, he said. The view from the top. He thought for a moment and said, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we met a great many giants and legends because we were a part of Lord of the Rings. Statesmen and women, philanthropists, captains of industry, and fans. Oh, the fans. <laughs> and many, 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 many fans. <laughs> any fans here this evening, thank you very much for coming out. <laughs> students in there. <laughs> you can be both. It's all right. uh, uh, the other massive impact that the Lord of the Rings had on my life, which I alluded to a moment ago, was the publicity machine and the way in which we were sort of thrust into the international pop culture maelstrom. Oprah, Larry King, NPR, The Muppets, <laughs> you name it. Actually, I'm not really sure if, the Mupp if anybody's on the Muppets, but uh, that sounded good. Um, uh, it felt like every single solitary publication, news, radio, and what on and on and on was, uh, was eager to be a part of the Lord of the Rings phenomenon. And that experience was, in a word, overwhelming. It was, you know, in a practical sense, life-altering. Life-altering. I mean, where we chose to live, how I carried on my day-to-day -day life, the nature of traveling, everything became adjusted. And I loved it. People would always, you know, compliment me on staying so grounded because it reminded me of an ideal that might be worth trying to preserve. Um, I thank God for my wife and our children. They are normalcy. Um, they are unconditional love. And they tolerate no BS. <laughs> They tolerate a lot of BS. Anyway, they're uh, they're a little elixir of humility that I sip from often. So I think that's a good, maybe the fullest account of the book. But I actually think this is more consider because now we've had time, kind of a recap or account that I've made for what it was like to make more wings. And now uh, we come to a point. Lessons learned. Um, perhaps I should back up for a bit of context. We're going to look at three films uh, and what I may have learned from each film. This was a fun exercise. <laughs> what did I learn from really good? <laughs> Trying to get a good night's sleep before Cindy Lauper shows up for this like music video, so she knows that you really love her music. That's it. Uh, but okay, just to lay it out, so the qualities that I've chosen to articulate are in no means comprehensive of everything I learned. They're just truths that occurred to me that I thought might resonate with you. 